he doesn't belong on the bottom sitting sad because he's been keeping the MCU like Atlas on his shoulders. <laughs> what up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jeremy Point. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, the Marvels. The time has come to see what the Marvels has to offer what Kevin Feige has said in the past on tape (laughs) saying that this is gonna be dope but Brian you know what's crazy I I think I was uh, I didn't even look at the screen but it sounded like a, it was a it was the Marvels trailer. It was a new Marvels trailer. It sounded mass serious. Yes, they've changed the tone of the of the TV, the TV ads. Tone is dramatic versus the yes, kind of Beastie Boys yes theater t- trailers that have been yes. more silly. Yes, and then the, I couldn't believe when I when my ears heard that. These dudes were pulling a rock move by bringing in a last minute cameo, Brian. Brian, take it over. Take it. I don't know what to say. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot, lot to, a lot to unpack here. We're we're about a week away. Um, I I will I will see it. You know, I'll do our, my usual routine. Thankfully, it's about an hour and a half, so <laughs> that's the good news. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, especially with this fall, man, I got like three and a half hours for Killers of the Flower Moon. I got almost three hours for Napoleon and three hours for Ferrari coming up. So, like, I need some, I need some ninety-minute yeah. movies. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah. So, look, I mean, the movie's been tracking poorly, as we discussed previously. This Variety article, Crisis at Marvel, talks about the project, um, and really says some pretty damning stuff uh, about the production in two things to me in particular stood out. So number one is um, this is the first movie apparently in the MCU canon that Disney has screened to a traditional screening audience. Typically screeners for Disney are basically the Disney executives and their families. It's like an inside job. So this and friends and friends, right? So I'm trying to be a friend. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But it's not the way other studios typically do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so with with the Marvels, they went and did it the traditional way, and audiences basically were like, whatever. And so that's put them in this panic mode of reshoots and what else can we add and what else can we do? And so I think that's directly leading to that's why Thanos's voice is in the TV. Oh my god! Like, there's a whole thing going around. It's like, oh, is Brolin going to be a cat? Listen, that is the lost tapes come making a comeback. Thanos' voice is in there, right? It's to try to like echo and connect you to the Halcyon days, the yester years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> was going to make a billion. That's why that's in there. And then we find out in this article, which I was shocked at, because Brie Larson was all about Nia DaCosta, the director that she basically handpicked for this project. And we heard all through the thing, Nia DaCosta is such a nerd. Kevin Feige had to tell her to turn down her inner Marvel nerd. Well, this Variety article says that Nia DaCosta left during post-production to start pre-pro on her next movie. Uh, here's the list of directors that would do that in a blockbuster film. No one. No one. So that smells like she was fired. Smells like she was very quietly shown the door after this movie was put in the can. And like they don't want to admit it. Because... The only other movie which I can think of that worked where this happened was Rogue One, where there's all those rumors about Gareth Edwards directed and shot it, but then Tony Gilroy finished it and Edwards was very quietly kind of shuffled off in the post-production. That's what this sounds like. That this tested poorly, they didn't like what she put together, and they very quietly fired her. And someone else, probably Kevin Feige, honestly, directly, which is why he's making the quotes he's making, went into the editing room and tried to save this, which good luck. I mean, that's, you know, and then on top of that, as you said, in great parallel to black Adam rumors of a, like it's coming out like rumors, Marvel added something late, something big. This is what I heard. And then, you know what, you know what we heard it was, but now who knows if it's true or not, but you know, what we're hearing it is, I mean, listen, 
I, I, we can we know that Henry Cavill was set up for his cameo set up to fail. <laughs> Listen, H- Henry Cavill as coming back as Superman would have been a decent sized story. Like I, I had that been real, had that been sanctioned by the studio. Yeah. The rumored cameo that's supposed to tie us from the Marvels to Deadpool three is Kelsey Grammer's Beast. Oh my goodness. What? Where where is the line of people who is demanding the return? I mean, I know Fraser's getting revived, so I understand. He was why a dope he beast. Wants. He was. I understand he was. why he would want to do this. Yeah, he but was where a dope is the beast. Line of fans that wanted Kelsey Grammer's beast to be resurrected. Why am I supposed to care? The box office. Where is this tracking? Yeah, I mean, like I said, the. the it's still looking at opening weekend of about like seventy million dollars down from the the in the U.S. compared to one fifty three uh, for the first film. So again, you're in the movie's a guaranteed loss, yeah. guaranteed. I mean, it's, it's not going to make. But the question is how much money it's going to lose. It's not going to question whether it's going to make money. And like yeah. with everything we've heard, I am expecting the the critical reaction to this to be pretty poor when we get that embargo lifted next week. I have to say, bravo. To the illustrator that did the, the 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 artwork for this article oh yeah that that sort of montage or the collage at the top yeah it's pretty cool this is just wonderfully made and thoughtful and it depicts exactly what has gone on although loki doesn't belong on top i mean I, on the bottom he doesn't belong on the bottom sitting sad because he's been keeping the mcu like atlas on his shoulders <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh, I've had no hopes for the Marvels since it was first announced. I hope one of the cameos for this film doesn't include the Blue Marvel because I actually no, I, really. Yeah, it, does, it does not sound like that's made it to the. If that was ever in the iteration, it does not sound yeah. like that's made it to the final. Thankfully, it has not because that I think that is a special story that that deserves its own thing uh because of the storyline and the time and the timeline and where it takes place Great. and you can do that then later on or what do whatever you want with it but uh I, I, this comes out this weekend right november 10th yeah so oh next, next, um, week, yeah, so next week. okay 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 but okay. i mean like this is Oh, and the other thing too is so Joanna Robinson, right, making her book tour, Reign of MC, Reign of uh, Reign of Marvel Studios, which is a great book. I'm about halfway through it. Um, she has reported. We just talked about Mahershala Ali leaving Blade. We just, and this one is also unsurprising. And we talked about this previously. Joanna Robinson reporting that Brie Larson looking to get out of her Marvel contract and will not come back. That's Carol Danvers which we said a couple weeks ago, why? Why would she and why would they want this to continue? And here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this has been speculated for quite some time that she really... uh, This was almost like a Ruby Rose situation. Yeah, she never found this part. Like, someone who has an idea, never connected the character of the fans to the degree that was necessary to do this. And yeah. it, she recognizes that, and she kind of she's like had it. She's had it. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's another another Avenger down. <laughs> I mean, Kang doesn't. I mean, what's Kang Dynasty going to be? He doesn't have to do anything. Nobody on the field. Actually, well, that assumes <laughs> that Kang himself will be on the field. But <laughs> oh, Avengers man. just self destructing. <laughs> like, oh my goodness! It, this is crazy to watch. Wow, the rise and fall, man. This is crazy. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of yet another thing that we threw out in the air. And now it is finally coming possibly to pass. These are things that these are conversations that have been had. By the way, we're so if we have a scale of desperation, how high on that scale is pulling a cameo from X-Men The Last Stand? as a way to save your project. I don't even know where it comes from, yo. Like, if I was in the room and they told me they were going to do that, I would have been like, I would have been like, yo, why? Why? How? Tell me why? How? Why? What? What led you to this 
decision to bring that cameo into this for what? I mean, seriously, that you know what that feels like? That feels like they had the whiteboard. They had the big draft <laughs> war room. And the first 15 choices wouldn't return the phone call. And like Kelsey Grammer's like, I got my Frazier coming back. Hell yes, I will get the blue makeup for you. Lee, he said, let me check my schedule. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so far, I would say one of the themes of the book to me is I think we overrated in the early days of Marvel how much they had planned out. I think that's one of the biggest revelations to me is that like there really was much more of a like, okay, we made it to step one. Okay, we made it to step two, as opposed to we know what step eight is and here's how we're going to get there. Yeah, that there was I just... think is one of the big, like they kind of, I hate to say they were more lucky than good, but there is that feel of like, there was as much good fortune in here as there was good execution. What they've been doing, they've been doing since Jump. And it just so happened that I think, Brian, this all came from the <clears throat> mind of Kevin Feige and his close-knit group that then expanded into more, again, cooks in the kitchen to delegate while he's trying to do all this other stuff. And he, and all the talk of us, all the talk about um, Kevin Feige being spread too thin. And that's, a, again, Brian, this is a conversation we had a long time ago. Spread too thin is certainly fair, but I think that makes a little bit of an excuse for Feige too, in the sense of, I think in the early days, he clearly has a knack. I would never dismiss that. There is genius. But there was, like I said, there was this element of luck that like he, he kind of was on a hot streak the way any athlete gets on a hot streak. And now he's on a cold streak. And like, I don't, I, I think we're overthinking it a little bit to be like, well, if Kevin could sit in a room by himself and focus on one project at a time, his genius would reemerge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He so. wasn't like, doing think, it like I that. Think it over, I think it overrates his ability to just be perfect. He's not. Like, I think it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, certainly, yeah, certainly. It's not a disrespect to his ability. It's just when I read this book, it's like there was a lot of things that had to go right early on and, and some things they got away with. And then all of a sudden, it's like the moment, like the audience gave them the momentum, not the other way around. And then they were empowered to then embark on this incredible ride to led to Endgame. Wow. Man. Like Iron Man 1, the production sounds like a disaster. Like, yeah. You have Jeff Bridges in the book basically saying, like, I'm a very methodical, disciplined actor. And he's like, well, we didn't have a script. Every day they were just handing me what lines they wanted me to say. And Robert Downey Jr. is over there improvising every scene. And that's what Favreau wanted him to do. And he's like, I don't work this way. That movie's awesome. But, like, you wouldn't give go to film school and be like, here, this is <laughs> like a classic. Right? So that's what I mean. There's genius, but there's luck. Yeah, yeah. And they hit it when wow, they hit it. man. Yeah. This is <sighs> Oh my god. Book does confirm by the way Tom Cruise was in talks and was the first choice to play Iron Man, but they couldn't afford him. They didn't have his money. Yeah. So that that long-standing rumor is true that that yeah. what was the plan. And Downey only got the job. This was hilarious. They didn't give they weren't going to give him the job because of all his personal problems. The only reason he got the job is Favreau himself leaked it to the internet and the fans loved it. And that's what got him the job. Wow. The rest is history. <laughs> this is fascinating. This is fascinating. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. I know we diverted again, but the stuff that we're hearing now, it just leads you down a road of learning more and seeing like yo i could have done this too let us know in the comment section below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the nerd report the show goes